What is good Foundation Nation and welcome to my 2021 in the bag. Let's get into it. So we're just gonna do this the way that everyone seems to. I don't really know who set the standard, but everyone seems to start with putters first. Um, I'm carrying right now a grip bag, but uh, that will be changing in a little bit. Uh, there's a little hint at something for you that I'm working on. So we'll just start with putting putters. So right now, uh, and for a while, I've been putting with PA3s. Um, these are actually some of the first, this is actually from the first run of custom stamps we ever did here at Foundation. It has our old logo on them. Uh, they're super beat up. I like beat up putters. Well, I think the PA3, when it gets beat up, it has a little bit more glide, wants to hold straighter. Um, so I use these for all my jump putts, normal putts, everything. Um, I started putting with a PA3 forever ago. Had to switch it up a few times here and there. Um, but if I've ever been able to carry whatever I wanted, the PA3 has been my choice. I really love how it's puddled top, has the bead, feels super comfortable in my hand, and um, is super consistent. Uh, then throwing putters, I carry a few different ones. Um, I'll kind of talk through. My most overstable is the Zone. Uh, it's kind of a putter mid-range hybrid. I always call it a putter. Some people get mad at that. Um, this is just my go-to forehand overstable approach shots. I throw it some backhand, but very rarely. Um, then uh, next up, probably my favorite forehand disc. I, I, throw, I throw this exclusively forehand. I never throw this backhand. That is a Ringer GT. This is a Jawbreaker one. It's pretty beat up right now, uh, but it's just dead straight. Just point and shoot. I can put it on a little bit of Anheuser and it'll slowly pan out back to flat, um, but it's super controllable. I like the thumb track on it for my forehands. I don't know why, that just feels super comfortable to me. And um, yeah, I've been really enjoying it. I'll probably just put a new one in the bag whenever we get some more in stock. We haven't seen them in a while, but as soon as I get some more, I'll probably put a new one in, uh, have a little bit more stability to beat it in. But I think the zone and the ringer really complement and cover every forehand shot that I need when it comes to the putters. Now these three, I throw pretty much exclusively backhand. Um, and these are the ones that I'm not 100% set on. Pretty much everything else in my bag is gonna be the same for a long time. These ones I constantly am rotating, um, trying to find what's most comfortable for me, but this is the setup I have right now. Uh, the most overstable is probably this uh, Pilot and Proton Plastic, just a Streamline Pilot Proton Plastic. It's pretty straight, has a ton of glide, but then has a slight finish at the end. Uh, typically, if I'm going to throw something really overstable backhand, I'm just gonna power down on like one of my fairways or mid rather than try to throw a putter hard. So that's why I don't carry any like extremely overstable putters that I throw backhand, but I've really been liking the Pilot. Um, I just kinda, it, it, it took a little bit getting used to because it starts turning a little earlier in the flight than some of the other ones I've thrown, uh, other putters I've thrown, but I really like the amount of glide and I love how this plastic feels. Uh, the next down in stability is the Penrose from EV7. I carry just the OG base plastic. It's got a little bit of give to it, super grippy. Um, I like it in the rain and pretty much any condition. I've actually fell in love kind of with how this thing flew after I did the review. This is the one from the review. It's super straight. Um, it allows me to just throw something straight with a very soft finish. It, to be honest with you, it flies like my Ringer, but for backhands. So, uh, if I were to throw the ringer backhand, I probably wouldn't have this in the bag, but this just feels more comfortable. So I keep this in the bag exclusively for backhands. Um, I'll, I'll throw some touch shots with it on like a little flex lines or pure hyzers. It pretty much just holds whatever angle I put it on. And I've really been liking it. And last but not least, kind of my understable one is my Pilot. Uh, this is in their Cosmic Electron plastic. Um, so it's kind of got that burst going. As you might be able to tell, it's super warped. Um, that's because of how many trees I've hit. If you haven't watched our videos, then you might not know, but I hit a lot of trees. And a lot of times it's with this disc, but right now with how beat in it is, it's a super great, just flip up to flat. Uh, it'll cruise dead straight, maybe veer off a little bit to the right with my um, right hand backhand. Uh, so it's pretty flippy. It's my most understable putter. Um, but yeah, I love it for Anheuser shots, flip up to flat shots and flat shots I need to turn a little bit uh, to get around corners and any kind of shorts, woodsy courses around here. Um, this is kind of my go-to in those situations where I just need to throw a putter 
kind of straight or flip something up a little bit. Uh, I've really been, really, really been liking this. Probably gonna put a brand new one in the bag here shortly um, and cycle one of these discs out. All right, so now let's jump into my mid ranges. Uh, I carry, I think, five mids in total. Um, the mid range game is something that used to be probably my most confident part of my game. And then, uh, unfortunately, for a little bit, I kind of lost my confidence when I was throwing, when I wasn't throwing a mixed bag. But now that I'm back to a mixed bag, got some of my favorites back in here, and that confidence is coming back. But one new disc in my bag that um, you might have been seeing recently and wondering what it is is the Recluse from Legacy. I carry it in the Icon Plastic. A lot of people probably, I've never really heard someone talk about this disc much. I'm not sure why. It came in, I felt it, and it just felt amazing. It felt so good in my hand. And so I immediately just tried it out and put it in my bag. It's like a go-to, really overstable mid-range. It's basically like a slower version of like a Firebird or something like that. I would compare it to the Justice, but it's like if the Justice had a hair more glide. So it wants to stay up in the air a little bit longer than Justice, but it still has that same just straight, hard finish. I love it forehand and backhand. It's like a utility mid-range. Um, so I've been going to this disc a lot, and I'll probably have one in my bag for the foreseeable future. I'll just rotate one out once this one gets a little too beat in. But yeah, I've really been liking it, and I really like the Legacy Icon Plastic as well. They've been able to get some sick swirls out of it, and the grip and feel of it is just great. Uh, next up, I carry three of the same mold here, which is the MD3. Um, this is like, this used to be the staple mid-range in my bag, and now it's back to being it again. Um, this top one is the most overstable one. It's probably like two or three steps down from the Recluse. It's just a domey glow. Uh, There's actually a factory second. It's just got that like shield stamp on it. Um, I really like it for just long pushing hyzers that you just want to kind of like slowly fade. If I throw it flat, it just kind of slowly starts coming out of it. This would be my go-to forehand mid if it didn't have this dome to it. But the dome actually I think is why this disc, I like it so much backhand. It keeps it in the air while still having that slight over stability that I really like. Um, I don't break this out a ton simply because I'd rather control one of the two that I'm about to talk about, but uh, when I do break it out, I have the confidence that it's going to fade and it's going to finish uh, pretty hard. These next two are pretty much identical twins of each other. They are both uh, been in my bag. Whenever one's in the bag, the other one's been right behind it because they both fly pretty much the same. It allows me in practice to kind of get two of the same shot and also in tournaments if I ever lose one because of how much I rely on this disc, I like to have the backup. So this is the one I mainly go to, but every once in a while you'll see this one come out. Um, I like it for forehand and backhand. It's just that dead straight mid. Um, for some reason, it, it flies very similarly to my buzzes. Um, but for some reason, I never liked the bus. It was in my bag, it was my go-to mid. I tried liking it, everything about me told me I would like it. You know, you might be wondering where Old Trusty is. Old Trusty's out of the bag. Uh, I just, for some reason, could never could never fall in love with the bus. I liked the flight, I just was never confident in my hand. And these MD3s give me the same flight, but I, it gives me that confidence in my hand. I don't know why, it just fits my hand so much better. So I really like them for both backhand and forehand, just dead straight, kind of point and shoot discs. Um, if I put them on a little bit of hyzer, they'll push forward on hyzer and have a nice finish at the end. Super controllable on any angle. They'll hold any, hold flat, uh, and they go forever. I'll be able to throw these um, sometimes up to match with my, my fairway drivers, like 320 to 350. I don't really know what I'm throwing anymore. Um, I just know that's kind of how I used to be able to throw them. So I throw a little bit shorter than that now, so we'll go with the 320 range um, is where I guess that kind of maxes out at. And then we got the 750 M4 is my go-to understable mid. This isn't that crazy understable. I used to be carrying the Soul when I was throwing only Discraft. Uh, this is like a faster version of the Soul. So you can put it on a lot of hyzer. I can trust it's always gonna flip up and it's always gonna move to the right, but it's not so flippy that I have to worry about it like cut rolling. Even if I throw it hard and flat, it just kind of wants to move to the right. One thing I've always loved about Prodigy mids is they've like mastered the late flip. So I can throw it on hyzer and it'll like slowly flip up and almost ride straight for a little bit and then finish to the right. So like when you expect the disc to fade is when it actually finishes turned all the way over. And that's something that I haven't really found in many discs, but I really love this one. I've had it in my bag for uh, on and off for a long time. Actually before I played for Prodigy it was in my bag, while I played for Prodigy it was in my bag and I took it out just when I was with Discraft. And when I went back to a mixed bag, it was one of the first ones back in because I just trust it, I know it, and it just gives me confidence every time it's in my hand. I love having that flip up to flat and ride um, mid-range. Uh, it's just one of those shots that 
I rely on so heavily that I really miss this disc when it wasn't in my bag. Okay, so now into the fairway driver. We're gonna start with the utility pocket. Um, up here, I always keep my most overstable and my most understable. They're like my trick shot discs. They're the discs I go to when I get in trouble, um, when I need something to be super overstable or when I need something to be like a roller. Um, these are the ones that I always go to. So the overstable one is the extreme. I've never thrown the tilt, but I would imagine this is kind of what a tilt flies like, just super overstable. Uh, the spot that the disc that used to be in this spot was the OG H1. Um, this is just like a slightly slower version of that. And I really like it. Forehand, backhand, feels super comfortable in my hand. And I trust it in pretty much any condition. I would throw it into a massive headwind on Anheuser and I know it's gonna come back. I don't think there's anything that can flip this disc and have it stay turned over. Um, I absolutely love it. Other end of the spectrum, my Avenger SS. This is my roller disc. It's got a nice little dome to it. It's got enough stability that when I get it down on a roller angle, it'll hold straight for a little bit before turning all the way over, but it also has enough under stability that if I need to throw standstill shots while kind of like pushing a low ceiling and I need it to go dead straight, I can trust this disc to only flip up to flat and kind of slowly move to the right when I need to power down on something. So it's got enough under stability to suit kind of that trick shot to tight, get out of trouble route, but enough over stability to be able to be a good distance roller where if I get it down on the right angle, it'll kind of go forever. I don't throw that shot very often, so that's why you probably don't see this disc very often, but if you do, something crazy is about to happen, most likely something bad, but I'm gonna try something cool. All right, and then in my bag here are the rest of my uh, fairways. We're gonna go most overstable to most understable. Uh, first off, I've got this um, misprint felon. This is a loose metallic felon. Uh, it, it's pretty straight compared to what you would think. When I hear the word felon, I immediately think like Firebird or Predator or something like that. This really isn't that. This is a, a much just straighter, slight finish at the end. Uh, it doesn't have much glide. I love it for forehands though. I just rip on it flat, it's gonna push dead straight, have a good finish at the end. Um, if I throw it on backhand, I never have to worry about it flipping up, but if it was in a headwind, that's probably what I would worry about. That's why I would go up to the extreme, uh, and that's why I carry the extreme. So this is kind of like my calm, overstable, just consistent flyer. I'm pretty much only ever throwing this flatter on hyzer. I never really crank over it on, a, on and hyzer because I, I just don't trust it that much. Um, but I really like how it flies when thrown flat or just long pushing high because I need to kind of have a good finish at the end. And the next up might surprise some people. The Onyx is completely out of my bag simply because I put these Thunderbirds back in. These are my go-to. This one's from 2015 and this one is from shortly after it. These are some of the first Thunderbirds I've ever owned. Um, I put them back in my bag and I just never touched my Onyx again once these went back in. I don't know why, um, I just, the, there's something about the Thunderbird that I just love. It has a little bit more glide than my Onyx's did. It has like a forward fade, uh, more so. My Onyx wanted to kind of almost be like a felon where it dumped out hard. I love the feel of the Onyx. I just love the flight of the Thunderbird a little bit more. So these are, I mean, anytime I need something just to go dead straight and have a good finish at the end, I'm going Thunderbird. I normally actually throw these even over some of my distance drivers because uh, I can get them just about as, to go almost equal distance. Um, these will be able to push 400-ish, 375 to 400 for me, um, which I absolutely love being able to do that with control with these. Whereas when I go to a distance driver, that's me having to like, flip something up or flex something. I don't know why these seem to go so far, but they do. Probably just because my arm speed matches them. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love them for forehand and backhand. They're both pretty much in the same stage of where you can see they're pretty beat in, but they're not flippy yet. They're where I can put it on hyzer and trust it just like, kind of like my MD3s to go dead straight and then finish at the end. Uh, whereas brand new with Thunderbird will want to go start like hyzer immediately. Uh, but if I throw them flat, they just kind of, they just want to go straight. Um, I love throwing stuff on hyzer though. So I think that's why I like beat in discs so much because I can throw them on hyzer and they won't flip up to flat, but you'll watch them kind of like fight it and then fade. And that's what I really like about them. Both of them, I kind of just try, if I pull out this one for one shot, I try to pull this one out for the next shot so that they stay getting beat in at the same stage. Uh, it's worked so far, but I love them forehand and backhand. These are my go-to fairway drivers. Another one of my signature fairways that I've always, always, always loved and always carried anytime I could is the TL. Uh, this is a super underrated fairway. People always love the T-Bird. Like if you look at in the bags for years and years, people always carried beat up T-Birds. And like, so I naturally grabbed T-Bird. 
you might you might know this, you might not. A brand new T-Bird is stable, like really stable, and it's not at all what you think it is. This is what you think a, a T-Bird is. If you watch pros throw T-Birds, that's probably what a TL will fly like for you. So that's why I love the TL. I can rip on it flat and it just goes dead straight. It flies similar to my Thunderbirds, but it's a little bit more controllable. It almost feels kind of like a mid in my hand. It gives me a little bit more confidence. Um, this one's still relatively overstable, so if I throw it flat, it is gonna fade at the end. If I put a little ante on it, it will get flat, but it won't you know, fully come out like a T-Bird would. It's just that super controllable fairway driver. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's, it's always been one of my go-tos. I even like this one for forehands, um, which I used to not like the TL for forehands, but this on a forehand, I can get to flip up a little bit and still come out super controllable. Uh, absolutely love the TL. And last but not least is the lift. Now this thing, I put in my bag expecting it to be like my Avenger SS, like expecting it to be kind of a roller type disc. It's not, it's actually pretty stable. So I'll throw it on hyzer and it'll slowly flip up to flat, go dead straight and then fade out. If I throw it flat, it'll kind of move to the right and then flatten. Um, I really like the controllability of this disc. It gives me a lot of confidence when I have a tunnel shot to be able to hit it on hyzer and still have it flip all the way up to flat and then push forward. That's something I didn't have for a long time. And with how I throw, I love throwing everything on hyzer. And so that gives me the capability to still throw a dead straight shot while releasing it on hyzer. I really like this disc. I like the feel of this Cosmic Neutron plastic and I mean, it, it looks pretty sick. Mine's kind of all scratched up and muddy from a uh, plane, but yeah, it looks sick, feels great. Absolutely love the flight of it. All right, and last but not least, we have the distance drivers. Now this is a, a spot where I kind of just throw stuff in and out. Um, I'm still trying to work through the differences, like what I like, what I don't like in here. Um, I used to be like a super mold minimalist where like I carried one putter, one mid-range, one fairway, one distance driver. As I've kind of started a disc golf shop and have my hands on a lot of plastic all the time, that's very hard to do. So I carry a lot more molds now, but um, I still kind of go back to the old uh, consistent ones. So first off, we got the Destroyer, you know, what, it, there's a reason it's the most popular distance driver probably of all time. I absolutely love this thing. Um, I carry three of them and they're kind of most stable to least stable, but they're all very overstable still. This first one is a, one I got at Collegiate Nationals. I think it was my junior year. Um, it's a Luster Destroyer, Luster Champion. I like it because it has that like star type feel, but flies like a champ destroyer. So just super overstable. You know, it's kind of like a PD2. Like I can trust it in any win. I can flex it in win. I can throw forehand on whatever angle I want. It's going to come out. Uh, so I don't go to it a ton just because of how overstable it is, but I love having it in the bag so I never have to worry about a distance shot no matter the conditions. The next step down, these two are pretty similar. They're, they're both just like kind of new destroyers. This one actually is brand new. So they both just, just fly like a good run of destroyers. I mean, they go dead straight and then fade hard at the end. You put them on Annie, they'll hold it, get the full flex out. You know, I love them for forehand too. Um, yeah, I've really been liking both of these. This was, uh, I got at the uh, Sexton Clinic that he did here a little while ago. We were vending there and we were selling these. And I mean, I was looking at them all day and it was really hard not to put it in my bag. So I bought one. And uh, then this one is from my favorite run of destroyers probably of all time. I used to have a bunch of beat up ones and I can't find them right now, but it's okay because I have this next disc that flies exactly like them. But it's a Shimmer Star Destroyer from 2016, the Sneaky Peak Classic down in North Carolina. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember what place I came in, but I had some money to spend, like funny money in the AM division. And I bought like five of them. Because back then, I believe it was like Avery Jenkins or someone had said, like, if you find a run of destroyers you like, just buy as many as you can. And so that's what I did. Uh, but yeah, it's a Shimmer Star Destroyer. Some people hate the Shimmer Star. I really like the feel of it. It's kind of like a mixture of Star and G Star. So it like has that G Star grip, but like the Star, like, uh, what am I thinking? Um, rigidness. So it's like not G Star gummy wise, but still has that grip. I don't know. I love it. Uh, so this one's like, again, just like a, a good destroyer. Just super straight, fades hard at the end, will flex out, you know, great forehand disc too. I've, you know, I go to this quite a bit, especially for like long Kaisers. It's just a good destroyer. Everyone kind of knows what destroyer does. I absolutely love it. Next step down is a Zeus. This one happens to be a big Z kind of beat in. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Zeus in general is like a step down from a destroyer to me. It just had a little bit more like a brand new Zeus 
There's some that are really overstable, but a lot of them, if I throw it flat, it'll turn a little bit and then come back, whereas I can't get that initial turn out of Destroyer. So the Zeus is always gonna be in my bag is like the farthest flying. Uh, it kind of just starts as a seasoned Destroyer, so I don't have to worry about beating the Destroyer up and losing it. This one, however, is a slightly more beat up than that to where I can put it on hyzer and trust it to slowly flip up and still come out. I can throw it flat and get a full, full flight out of it, or I can put it on high ante and trust it to flatten and still come back at the end. Um, this was from like a limited run with Ledgestone or possibly Worlds in uh, 2019, I think. And um, yeah, it's just a big Z Zeus. Uh, I was able to pick one up and I debated if I wanted to collect it or throw it. I chose to throw it and I'm very glad that I did because it's been in my bag ever since. Um, super great run. The next step down is another one of our Patreon misprints. It's a To The Moon Trace. Uh, so this is a Cosmic Neutron Trace, I do believe. Um, really like the feel of the plastic. This flies kind of like a Wraith, which a Wraith kind of flies like a, a slower destroyer, which means you can get that initial turn out of it. Uh, so this disc, if I throw it on hyzer, it'll fly kind of like that Zeus, but a little bit more controllable. Uh, so it will flip up a little bit. If I throw it flat, it'll turn and kind of come back. Um, but it's board flat. So I actually like this kind of more for distance forehands. Um, I don't know why, it just kind of feels a little bit better in my hand than some of the faster discs. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I haven't thrown it a ton. I don't know if it'll stay in my bag uh, because I feel like it might overlap a little too much with the Zeus, but it's in my bag for right now because I got an extra spot. So I've been throwing it, I've been enjoying it. No matter what, I just like the look of it. And last but not least, the farthest disc I have ever thrown in my entire life uh, that is the Hades. Now, some people might be thinking like, what the heck, how are you throwing the Hades? Um, Cause I hear so many people when I say, I love the Hades and I throw it and it's the farthest line disc in my bag. They're like, oh wow, like mine just rolls. Well, if you look at this one, actually you can probably hear that. It's very domey. And what I found is if you find a domey enough run of Hades, these things are amazing. They just like, I can throw it as hard as I want and it'll just flip up to flat, slowly move right, and still finish at the end. I have had multiple throws. Now you've seen my videos, our videos on foundation. You know that I can't throw super far, but with this disc, somehow I'm able to push kind of close to that 500 mark if I hit it right. Sounds crazy. It is crazy because any normal disc, I can't do that with. These discs, I'm probably pushing like 420 to 450. But this disc, it just fits, like it just works. I don't know why, I don't trust it forehand, it kind of scares me, but backhand, I just throw it on hyzer, it flips up. If I throw it a little bit less hyzer, it'll flip up, ride to the right forever, and then crash back at the end. Um, I, I just am in love with this disc. This is probably one of my all time favorite discs. I haven't, you know, the run, they haven't had a good domey run in a little bit, but the second I see another one with this type of dome, and that kind of heartbeat, I'm going to buy another one because once this comes out of my bag, I'm gonna need another one in the bag. All right, so that's gonna wrap up all the discs in my bag. Uh, I do wanna show one more thing, which I think this is sick. One of our biggest supporters and Patreons, patrons, uh, Dan Lazinski made us these minis and this is the the mini i carry so he actually bought a supreme flight luna and then cut a circle out of it and then just made an epoxy mini with it and he sent them to us uh i thought it was super sick and so you can see it's kind of like scratched and stuff but this thing is like indestructible um i absolutely love it and this is what i have been using ever since i know we have foundation minis and stuff like that but i thought this one was special and whenever i pull it out it just like puts a smile on my face so that's why i have it and that's why i keep it all right, so thank you for watching my In The Bag. Um, as most of you probably know, I'm a retired professional disc golfer now. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even say that with a straight face. But no, I don't really play any tournaments anymore. Uh, this is pretty much just what I use in our videos and stuff like that. You'll see some stuff cycle in and out, but my main go-tos are gonna stay my main go-tos. The one disc you might see coming into my bag and taking the pilots out is the Nova. Uh, I've been missing the Nova. I literally named my dog after the Nova um, because of how much I love that disc. So. You know, if it comes back in my bag, you'll see me throw that a lot. But other than that, everything else is, is pretty set. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. I'll probably carry most of these discs in my bag for the next few years. Uh, rotate some new stuff here, here and there. But if you ever see a disc in our videos and you're wondering what the heck I'm throwing, just comment and ask, and I'll most likely respond and let you know. But thanks for uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all your support. Check links in the description below to our website. Um, I don't know how much of this is actually in stock, but if there's anything that you're interested in looking, we usually carry uh, pretty much all this at in and out depending on whether it's in stock or not so you can check the link down there and shop our site and other than that we'll see you in the next video
Thank you.